Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to share with you some information I just came across in a study. Uh, the study hasn't even been published yet. It was just put online, and it will be in clinical pediatrics this next month, November 2013. And the title of the article pretty much says it all, but then there's a little bit more to it. So the title was an orthodontic retainer uh, preventing remission in celiac disease pretty interesting, got me interested. So basically, it turns out this study was about a nine-year-old girl who had a lot of abdominal pain. She was diagnosed with celiac disease. She had blood tests, she had biopsy, and um, upon going gluten-free and being very strict on a gluten-free diet, she did not improve. And I really have to give kudos to whoever figured this out because I would not have, I've never heard of this before, but the plastic, the hard plastic that her retainer uh, was made out of for her, her teeth um, had gluten in it. Now the product is called plasticized uh, methacrylate polymer, so that's the actual substance. And um, upon no longer using her retainer, all her symptoms went away. She felt better, her blood tests and her biopsy all cleared up and resolved uh, her celiac disease. So very interesting. So when you think of, so what the researchers warned is that we need to look at non-dietary forms of gluten. And prior to this study, I would have thought of things like lipstick, where it's not really a food, but we definitely ingest it. Children around Play-Doh, they're playing with it, it gets in their mouth, it has wheat in it. Um, you know, things like shampoos or body lotions where uh, the skin kind of eats <laughs> the gluten because it's ingested. We've certainly seen that in a lot of our patients who can tolerate you know, wheat germ in, in shampoos or body lotions, things like that. So that would have been sort of the extent of, of what I would have worried about in the past. But now we have this hard plastic uh, to add to the list. And it's not just in retainers. Um, it's also used in dentures. It's used in white fillings in dental work. It's also used in the eye. It's used uh, in cataract surgery when you're getting a new lens for the eye uh, due to cataracts. It's used in some hard contact lenses. Uh, what else is it used in? Oh, it's used in uh, dermatology as far as cosmetic fillers uh, that are injected in the skin to get rid of wrinkles and things like that. And um, last but not least, it's used in orthopedics as a bone cement. Now. I, I did some research, and, and this is what I found. I'm sharing with you what I found. As far as knowing how volatile this gluten is in these products, I don't know. I wasn't able to find any research on that. But uh, once again, I never would have thought that a retainer, even though it's in the mouth, uh, it's such a hard type of plastic, I wouldn't have necessarily um, thought that gluten would have been mobilized out of it. So certainly uh, lenses in the eye, fillers under the skin, they all could be a source, so uh, we don't know for sure. I'm sharing with you what we do know for sure, which is this uh, one young lady and uh, her retainer, but um, definitely gives us some, some room for discovery and thought and uh, investigation into the same kind of plastic that was in the retainer and, and its use in other types of areas that the human body can be exposed to. So if you know of someone who is not thriving on their gluten-free diet, you know in the past what I would have said is to look at those secondary effects of gluten and I'm not changing my mind, but now we need to expand our horizons a little bit and really look at these non-dietary sources of gluten to see if that might be an exposure that's creating a problem. So I hope this was informative for you. It was, it was for me, and certainly I'm going to be looking at that with uh, our patients here at the clinic. So if you have any questions about this, do let me know. And until next time, I wish you very good health.